view, CMOs might be losing their seat at the table. And let me explain why. Most of the marketing teams are focused on um, influencing acquisition, demand generation, which is in mature companies roughly 20% of the revenue. So why would we spend 80% of our marketing budget on 20% of the revenue? Why not have marketing teams become more strategic twofold? First of all, also influence life cycle, acquisition, expansion, upsell, and recurring revenue retention marketing, number one. Number two, be much more interdependent because today product teams do what they want, don't they? And customer success talk to customers any way they want, and sales talk to customers any way they want. And in the end, as a customer, they have a bad customer experience because everybody's talking to them all over the place. Nobody's seeing connecting the dots. If I'm a CS, I don't know that sales talk to them. I don't know that product had a product review of them. Why not connect it all together? So the model we see is a vision of customer and even broker. This customer marketing team basically connects the dots and all the other teams kind of follow those requests through there. And we'll talk about how HubSpot does that but with that CMO we become more strategic and influence, I think, more than 50% of the lifetime value of the accounts. And there's a lot of talk about growth. I'll not go too much into depth, but there's community-led growth, customer-led growth, podcast-led growth, marketing-led growth, and product-led growth, and many others. We'll focus today on customer-led and community-led, and we'll explain how they merge. Awesome, so one more person that's talking about it, and I'm a little bit biased here, because it's the founder of the Bible, one of the founders are in the shop. Uh, and he really introduces this concept of community-led growth, which we sort of see as the umbrella term, under which customer-led growth fits in, but other things fit in as well, and we'll get into a little bit of how they work together. Uh, but something that he said here that I thought was really interesting was, you know, companies that succeed, they are creating massive communities for the category that facilitate connections and win hearts, minds, but also market share. So that's exactly what we're focused on at HubSpot. Uh, but there's also validation of the strategy makes sense, right? So it's not just old folks talking about it, there's actual methods that support, uh, support this. Uh, and one example is Forrester's prediction that marketers and B2B marketers are right now going through a transition where they spend their budget from a 70 to 30 percent mix on new customers to existing customers. And over the coming years, that's going to be flipped on its head where 70 percent of marketing budget will be spent on programming for your existing customers, making them more successful, and turning them into a force for the flywheel to keep that growth. But not only are we you know, starting to put our resources towards that strategy, we're also putting a hiring, which is part of the resources, and one of the most uh, quickly growing positions within marketing is customer marketing managers. I can speak to that a little bit anecdotally. When I worked in marketing 10 years ago, I didn't know a single person with this title, uh, and now I work with a bunch of them, so it's awesome. So a little bit about how these two strategies we're talking about kind of merge and come together, but also where they're a little bit separate and complement each other. So Customer-led growth is really focused on impacting all of your revenue pillars. Uh, that is about your customer activation at scale, right? So that's all about building cohesive programs uh, that reward customers, that help customers become more, more successful. Uh, and at the core, it's about having a synced view for all of your internal teams. This is where like one platform, where you can get all the data points, all the touch points for your customers in one place with a single source of truth becomes really important. Moving over to community-led growth, again, an umbrella term. So your customers should be at the heart of that, but it goes beyond just your customers. It's your partner uh, ecosystem, if you have one, uh, prospects, influencers, enthusiasts, basically anyone who's interested in your category, in your service, uh, should be a part of your community and help influence uh, all aspects of the flywheel. But Cal and I, I think we're in agreement that where the magic really happens is where these two strategies come together. I think advocacy programs, building an advocacy program that is community-led uh, is a great example of where these two strategies really, really come together uh, and where companies have a lot of leverage. When they right. Can you give an example to that? Like in HubSpot, in their community that is mainly home for customers, they might ask customers to share something on social. You activate the customers in the community, then they go to social networks, LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever, and they then share stuff and bring people who are not even customers, they could be prospects, they could be influencers, into HubSpot's content, event, whatnot. So that's a classic motion of customer community that growth to actually bring in more eyeballs at the end of the day for people. Yeah, and 
you'll see in a second that HubSpot has built our advocacy program and embedded into the community through new basic technologies, but we'll get into that in just a minute. But um, quickly just getting into how HubSpot is trying to not just talk the talk, but walk the walk on this. I have to do this full LinkedIn post from my boss, Lori Angelotti, but she recently announced that she uh, is taking on a community-led growth team as a VP of marketing under which customer marketing will sit, uh, advocacy will sit, our major education pillars like our academy will sit. So we're kind of bringing all of these programs together and underneath this community like motion, of which again, customer brand and customer marketing is a huge component. And if you remember the session about change catalysts on the first day, this is change catalysts. This is a company basically saying, we're having a new idea. We're building a new organization around that idea. We're creating a new title idea. This is the first time I see a VP of community like growth. And, and Lori and the team want to change catalysts to become top small. Absolutely. Hopefully, I get a promotion just for shouting my boss out. But I feel like something she said here. So, excuse me, I will read one part of it, which is that a community led strategy should create a sense of shared ownership of your brand to the people who really control it, your customers, and creates incentives that let them share in the outside of your company's success. That might look like a decentralized you know, community where the folks have a lot more control over what are the topics that are talked about, what are the content that we create, and that's exactly what we're trying to build at HubSpot. So we see community-led growth as a single place to learn. So it includes all of the different programs that we talked about. Different organizations may structure this a little bit differently, but we kind of put these core teams underneath uh, this community-led growth approach. So we talked about you know, why it's a good strategy, why it makes sense, why folks are talking about it, but at the end of the day, it should be across your customer journey, your funnel, your flywheel. Uh, at the acquisition stage, we know that advocacy uh, actions like reference, customer stories, can impact as much as 70% of your acquisition pipeline based on research that Base has done. Uh, your customers are also the leaders in upselling, cross-selling, and expansion motions. You should be turning your customers that have done that successfully, successfully into the heroes of the story. Uh, and other customers will want to follow along, right? Um, and then lastly, but not least, of course, we really care about loyalty and retention of your customers. So uh, folks that you can identify as engaged advocates taking advocacy actions uh, for your company uh, tend to have a 30% improvement on their retention rate. At HubSpot, we did a little bit of digging into this just in preparation of this, um, this presentation. And our advocacy program that I'm going to talk about more in a second is only a few months old, but we're already seeing that that cohort of advocates has a 55% higher retention rate. So we're very excited about that. And it means more investment in advocacy, which is great. Uh, but with that, I'm going to take it back to Gal. Yeah, and just reiterating on that number, 55% higher retention rate customers in advocacy or in programs versus not. It also taps into what Forrester has been talking about, about the connection between uh, custom, being customer obsessed and how it increases retention, how it increases the employment. But I mean, this is, the numbers are there to share with your management team, explain that customer related or community related promotions definitely impact their needs. It's not just uh, about customer experience. So let's try to kind of start digging into the formalizing the whole process. So in the past, and for some companies this is still a current stage, you have a disparate program, so your advocacy program was run on one team, community program another team, maybe customer voice another team. They didn't really talk to each other, maybe they didn't even all belong to marketing, so they weren't really even in the same department. And nobody tapped into the data, and nobody really cared about what other programs did that much. Present tense, I think we're, we're in a place where we, most companies, by the way, 3,500 organizations, big companies in the US, have customer marketing teams. That's about 3,000 plus companies who are now the umbrella organization. It's still a, a, moving, a moving target, a growing function, but they're the umbrella organization that under them put advocacy programs, customer marketing programs, reference programs, sometimes communities, sometimes not, voice of customer programs, etc. Um, and now they try to tie all those programs together and say, this is one customer. They don't care about our programs. This is one customer which has one engagement with this X brand, like HubSpot, and we should make sure that that engagement is streamlined. By the way, our internal employees, product team, sales team, customer success team, marketing team, want to see that whole timeline of engagement so they can tap into what other teams have done and move that motion forward. And that's really where the world, we think, is going 
in 2023-2022. That's a future this customer-led growth framework where you actually have a very customer-first oriented approach, a great experience for your customers, but also a great experience for your internal teams. They actually all see the same picture of the customer. They actually all understand their journey, and they all understand why this person is a champion and this person isn't or have a leverage. Um, and yes, it might require some org changes. For example, today marketing teams are super disparate in the way they even reach out to customers. Events team will talk to them maybe directly, and then the management team will talk to them on something else, maybe to do with use. Advocacy, of course, their own thing, and PR for, I don't know, talking to analysts. And it's kind of disconnected even within the marketing bucket. But talk about product and CS, they totally don't interact. Again, in the world that we're seeing maturing now, all of those asks, we call them asks, would follow through customer marketing teams. There would still be a different department of product and CS, but when CS needs somebody to be, be in a user group, they would actually go to customer marketing. And actually, Hustle has a great example because Lori's team now has a person with title customer success marketing, correct? So customer success, their marketing person lives under customer marketing inside Hustle. Yeah, she actually was great, right? So that those customer success Still get funded through the rest of the possible and we kind of use that. We want to show your work chart, your work chart to your customers, and that's essentially what we're trying to do with this community led team and this customer marketing team. So, so this is the new organization, and again, this, this is a great experience for customers, but also a great value internally because again, the simplest example, somebody's active in the community, would you want to know that and then ask them if they also want to be an advocate? If somebody's solving on questions on a specific product, wouldn't you want the product team to know that and actually tap to that person and basically say, ah, maybe you could be a beta tester or, or give us a review about features because you we see that you're an expert on that specific product. So that's the way that things could and can work in 2022. Um, here are some examples. So yeah, this is using our platform base or you know, Crowley K, so the platform still has Crowley K, but um, it first, Part you see here is internal teams just logging into the system and putting it in a form. So maybe today you have that form on Google form, a sound form, whatever form. They can just log in and submit, I need something to talk to an analyst. I need something to take up to write re reviews because we have Gardner Peer Insight or G2 is on their quarterly review. We need somebody to be a beta customer, speaking in an event, manage a user group in Germany, and so on and so forth. We need we need. That form comes in. Then in the system, they can actually self-serve. They can go in and see which customers can do that themselves. So now they have access to the customer base. You don't need to ask favors of salespeople because they don't have access to salespeople. They can actually see it and understand where their customers are and which customers are relevant right now because they haven't done anything but they're willing to do something and can take that specific actions because they're in the right industry, the right country, the right title, and so on and so forth. Then they actually go one step deeper and see that specific customer. And you can even take from the game side from Zendesk their health score. And they can take from Salesforce or, or HubSpot CR their ARR. So suddenly they see data that sometimes only sales have seen, or customer success have seen, or product have seen. Everybody in the company sees the same data of the customer, and they know which customers do what and pick them either self-serve or through a managed process. This is an even more detailed example where we actually go dive into the reference request process. In this case, it's a HubSpot reference request. But Process, but it could also be also working on Salesforce CRM, Oracle CRM, and so on. A salesperson inside the CRM, in the deal, in the opportunity, can both see which content is relevant to that opportunity. Hey, they're both manufacturing companies from Texas. Right, there's a manufacturing company in Texas. So, uh, oil, oil company. And, and uh, they both have, um, so here's a customer story, a customer video. Uh, a quote, a review from a similar company. It, it resonates, it makes sense. But not only that, they can then ask to talk to that customer through a reference request. Again, either self-serve, find people who are relevant and have not taken a call the last two weeks and are willing to take one, or have a managed process where they actually ask somebody that need to find that reference person. Lastly, that reference person then gets a note, a ping. Hey, Sam, you're in our program, and by the way, this prospect would love to talk to you and hear about HubSpot or this product. Can you take the call in the next coming days? And that can go through Slack, through email, in-app message, inside the community, inside the product. We want to meet customers where they are. We want to engage their journey. We want to make it seamless for them, for the company, but also protect the customers from being overused or abused while they use it. Awesome. Thank you.
uh, give a couple anecdotes here. Sure. Some, some couple things you mentioned. So we're actively implementing this at HubSpot. Uh, and just last week, we had uh, a customer who's a top advocate. We love him. He does a lot of things for us. Uh, and using this system, we were able to see that in the last month, like five different requests have come from him. To speak to the board, our board offsite, where we bring customers in to record a customer video, uh, a couple of other actions, a reference call, and we actively decided to give this guy a two month break. We're not going to ask him to do anything. Like if we didn't have this information, this data, we would have no one to stop talking to our guy because he wasn't using the for us. And then on this piece, we are implementing this. We, we've already implemented this in our European markets, and we're in the process of bringing it over to North America and the rest of the world. Uh, and earned really great early successes. The team is super happy, the sales team especially. Has anybody here ever managed a reference program or is currently managing one? It can be a bit of a pain in the butt, right? <laughs> I think I can safely say that. Uh, but with this process, it's a lot more automated. The sales reps feel a lot less friction in the process. And last month was the first time we had 99% fulfillment in our European markets for customer references. Ooh, an awesome win. Nice. Uh, to retire that. Thank you for giving us Oh, yes, the technology. Thank you for the house and HubSpot uses it. <laughs> uh, all right, taking it a little bit more into advocacy, which again is the team I manage. Uh, so while all these strategies will be on advocacy, I'm especially passionate about advocacy uh, and how it should be at the core of a CLG strategy. It also works out that even though we're talking about customer led growth and community led growth, it has the same acronym. CLG. So when we use the acronym, you may not know exactly what we're talking about. It's a little bit of both. Uh, but advocates, you know, I see them as the core of your strategy, and they should be influencing all of these other pillars. Uh, quick examples here, right? Your advocates, as I mentioned earlier, can lead the way for your customers. Show them how to use your other customers. Show them how to be successful. Show them the value of being an advocate as well. Because one thing we didn't have a dedicated slide here for, but I do want to mention is that we are really focused on adding what we call outsized value to our advocates. Uh, and that means that they you know, rack up points as they take these actions, and so that, that is not necessarily re revolutionary, but uh, what we're not doing is giving them swag. We might, we might give a piece of swag in there, right? But like, that's not the core of the benefits we're delivering to advocates. We're doing things like placing them in speaking slots. Some spot gets asked to speak at a lot of events. Uh, and sometimes instead of sending one of us, we're sending one of our advocates because they want to build up their own brand in the space and their expertise. We are giving them education credit, so if they are a great creator on TikTok or YouTube, uh, we are paying for them to go and take a course in that and get even better and even tighter on that because it helps us because they create really quality content. It also helps them fulfill their own professional goals. So we're really focused on that outside value, and I want to make sure I guys spend a quick minute on that. Yeah, and um, just, just to add on that, is because, yeah, it helps a lot of the approach where it's in a way, it's still a gamified program for the applicants, but the core is not the education, the core is the context, what they want to give back from this, what they're good at, what they love to do. And HubSpot is amazing at giving them that value back. Again, not so much around gift cards and swag and things that are very custom, but actually surprisingly inviting and giving them a course on, you know, build your brand on LinkedIn or whatnot. But another thing to tap on that is a lot of people have different definitions of what is advocacy. I'll tell you mine. Mine, mine is super simple. If a customer did something that is not part of their job for you, at least once a year, heck, they're not. They, they didn't do something that actually, they didn't use HubSpot to send an email campaign for their company. They actually talked about HubSpot in an event, quote, whatever. So, I mean, we don't need um, people to do three things a day to want them as advocates. We want more customers of HubSpot has hundreds of thousands of customers, we want those hundreds of thousands to do one thing a year. Okay, one thing a quarter, whatever. But we don't want them to do necessarily three things a day. Not just the 12 raving fans, but turn every customer into an actively engaged, participating customer, which eventually means at least time in an That for us is the Absolutely, I also want that definition. Uh, and then, you know, as I said, they can influence your existing customers who are not advocates to Band with your product, but also to become advocates. They are the first line of defense in your own community to help answer questions, build up their own thought leadership, which is awesome and motivation for, for advocates. So we see what that, that uh, we identify at HubSpot. Uh, and then we also tap into advocates to help represent us in a really authentic way, right? We don't feed them what to say, we don't get any of that, but we help place them into non-communities. Uh, 
an example here that we are really growing into that operations phase. We launched Operations Hub last year. Uh, and so we are working with what we call some of our top advocates, some of our more start briefing kind of fans to place them into communities like Pavilion, uh, right, to, to just kind of have that perspective on how HubSpot can help operations professionals, CROs, et cetera. We're also building micro community CROs. Any so CROs more, out here, get in touch with me. I have a cool community for you to be a part of. So you're mobilizing customers or advocates in the op operations management space where I've talked about the outside of the system. So I think people know that HubSpot is doing RevOps or operations. Absolutely, right? It's a great way that they are driving influence for us in channels that we normally don't get uh, a foothold or you know, don't get to be a part of the conversation necessarily. Uh, but what I'm really excited about is that using uh, basis software, we've been able to build this gamified advocacy experience that is embedded, fully embedded into our community. For the uh, customer, the user, they would not know how we're using two different softwares that host our community and host our advocacy program, but they live in the same space. Um, I think one of the first larger yeah. communities that's yeah. come in and build an advocacy program is fully not embedded on the page, it's yeah. fully embedded into your community. And that brings a lot of power, right? Uh, we're able to target the asks we make of customers uh, pretty uh, finely. We can get into which product they're using, are they a partner, are they not a partner, and all sorts of level details and put the right ask in front of them at the right time. Uh, we can source uh, reference customers for those of us who have managed reference programs. Sometimes you have to send an email to like 10,000 customers, you might get 50 who raise their hand. We put up a challenge uh, to join our reference program, gave them lots of points to do so, which unlocks that value I talked about earlier. We had 90 folks sign up to become reference customers based on one challenge. But it also gives us the power to connect with folks no matter where they are in the community. Uh, so if you are in ideas for uh, email marketing, we can present you with uh, some further education on it. We can target that really well. Yeah, and that little thing, it's basically a pop-up, an in-app message that is just in any discussion forum. So if somebody's asking about how do I run so-and-so campaigns, then you tell them, ah, because you're interested in this topic, here's something you should learn about. Or why don't you join a user group talking exactly about this? So now you make the engagement contextual for us what they're interested in, not just the title of the role, country, and industry, but also their interests. Awesome. All right. Now we'll quickly do this because I want to make sure we leave a couple minutes for questions here. You and I have drift a little bit. It's taking a little bit longer than we had planned, but hopefully you guys have enjoyed that. Uh, we are also using advocates to gather testimonials. Those of us who have done that, but that work is also a bit of a pain in the butt. Excuse my language. Uh, but we put up a challenge uh, recently when we were ready to launch a new version of our service hub software, our, sort of our customer success software. Uh, just to you know, tell us about your experience using this product. We had 90 different testimonials, or right now we're working with Base to build a Slack integration where we're gonna type all of those testimonials into a Slack room. It doesn't have to be terribly complicated, right? But we can tag in the product manager that works on that product when we get a testimonial or get some feedback. And now you're showing the value of advocacy to all these other teams. And you sort of get more investment, you get more buy-in from the company to keep growing your advocacy programming. So we just focused in on advocacy. Again, don't want to you know, get away from the fact that there is a lot more than just advocacy that plays into the strategy, but uh, I think it should be at the core of it, in my, in my own view. Uh, but it will also require you to do alignments outside of uh, what you might think of as marketing teams, customer marketing teams, community-led teams. Uh, an example here is your corporate product organization, right? They need to be jumping into your community, helping answer questions, receiving feedback. If you have an ideas forum where the customers are suggesting ideas for your product, but the product team is actually not in there taking in that feedback and implementing some of those ideas, then it might as well not exist, right? So you, have, you do have to have some cross-organizational buy-in to make the strategy really happen. Uh, and with that, I will turn it back to Gail to close us out. Cool, so I think you know we've covered a lot here, and then hopefully you've understood part of the benefits of being community customer that grows. Um, think onboarding, right? You can accelerate onboarding and adoption of your products if you engage your customers from the early day on and have a touch point like in the academy, in the community, inside your, you know, when they go and read a blog or participate in an event, a virtual event, you can actually engage them in real time and say, hey, by the way, just finish this course so you'll get better knowledge about something, or you just forgot this, but then you move on when they're much more mature in their cycle, you know that they're 
this company does not upsell to this feature, you can identify the champions, the advocates within the company, and say, here's a feature that we think you would love to use because you love other things. Those people have more than double the percentage to actually buy and an upsell. Then when they do so, you ask them, hey, you're an advocate, can you tell the story about what you buy and, and the results, what you've seen? Then you get a, an upsell customer story, you use that upsell customer story, other customers like that, and you keep on the motion. And that's how you build a flywheel around customer engagement, advocacy, customer growth. But you also tap into their needs and you respect and ask them, how can we do better? HubSpot has, like, they're asking their customers, hey, these are five courses we're thinking of shooting out. Which one out of these five are the most important for you that we focus on first? So you give the customers a way to share their voice, tell what you want better, whether it's service, academy, product, events. You actually partner with them and create a two-way street in the way that you work with your customers. And all this, again, kind of creates much higher loyalty, high retention as we talked about, and basically accelerating advocacy and then giving back to your customers and creating that whole motion that generates revenue and growth.